Hi there, everybody. Dong here from Cyprus, back again with another edition of the Pea Brain Show, where I have lots of different segments for you on many different subjects. So there truly is something for everybody. So I hope to see you all here. Oh, I haven't put a little message up. I always put something. Let me type something up for anyone coming in. Welcome to my awesome community. And I will remember to do what I usually do, is to talk about everything and read everything, because I know so many people have said to me that they watch this back after the event while they're doing other things, like housework or doing other bits and pieces. And I know as well, a lot have actually said to me today, that they can only listen in because they're driving or at work. <laughs> so I will try and remember to say everything I'm showing you rather than just showing something, or I'm assuming from your end it's a bit pointless to listen if nothing's being said. And I always read the comments back. I've always read every comment back, so I will do that. And what do you think of my backdrop? This was because I'm now doing lives on my other channel. The backdrop was that. I didn't have the board. But, you know, I have the board in this uh, video on this channel, Mondays and Wednesdays lives, because I'm now creating my sticker board. And we have Black's Tropical Homestead on my first two stickers from there. So if you want to send me a sticker, it will go up there. I cannot send you anything in return. Let's make that very clear. Let me just turn my fan off because it's blowing everything around a little bit. So, yes, the um, material at the back was just for that. And I thought, oh, it looks quite pretty. So I thought, well, let's leave it and just put the ball back on top. And don't worry where Virgil is. I know some of you worry where Virgil is. If you don't know, it's a Thunderbirds. I'm looking at him now. He's behind the laptop up on the side there. So Virgil is quite safe. And in fact, it's better because I can see him all the time now. My dream man. So let's begin with the segments that I've chosen for today from the Pea Brain Show. The first segment I want to start with today is my little segment that I like to call Past Times, Past Times. It can be about old music, old videos, old computer games. I've shown you some of those already. Old ball games or anything like this. And I only just got together what I was going to show you today. I've been a little bit busy and I thought, oh, what can I show you? And I always like board games. My parents always bought me board games for birthdays and Christmas, particularly Christmas. And part of our Christmas day was that we would play the board game in the afternoon. So I had a really big collection of board games. Most I got rid of, but I've kept some favourites. And I've still been collecting board games since I've been an adult as well. So anything a bit different. And I found this in a shop. It is new. It's not an original, I think. It's just they've revived old games they had for sale. So this is new, but a copy of an old game. And it's called The Viking Game. And this is how it comes inside. It's an English shop I got it from. I'm trying to think what the blooming shop was called now. Um, I can't remember the name of the shop. Let me see if there's a label on the back. Uh, Historic Craft Limited is where it's made. That's not the shop. And this is the board, if you like. Now, being a copy of an old game, it's done on cloth. So here is the cloth. It's quite good to have a little cloth. Obviously, if you play a game on the cloth, you've got to remember to roll it with the front up 
outside because or else it won't lay flat and it will as you roll it up and lay it out again it will curl up and then the instructions must be on the lid the historic background of the game the Viking game must rank as one of history's great board games. It was at its most popular during the Dark Ages in Northern Europe. Like so much of the history of the Dark Ages, our knowledge of the Viking game is patchy, a mystery now half solved as a result of archaeological research. The game was popular in the Viking homelands in Scandinavia as early as 400 AD and was carried by the Vikings to the lands they conquered. Over the centuries, the game developed different versions of the board and they have been found by archaeologists in sites from Ireland all the way to Ukraine occasionally referred to in manuscripts the game was known as i think that's in i in fatly or something which means literally the king's table the study of these manuscripts and examination of the various types of board and pieces has enabled researchers to work out how the game was probably played. There is no doubt, however, that many versions of the rules existed at different places and at different times. It was last recorded as being played in Wales in 1587 and in Lapland in 1723. Its decline began in the 11th century as chess grew in popularity. It soon lingered on only in remote country districts. And then it's got how they suggest it's played. So they have different ideas and then there's different information about the actual pieces. The rules we suggest below reflect how the game might have been played in the 9th or 10th century. The board incorporates typical Viking patterns in its design and is printed on natural linen, one of the few woven fabrics available to the Vikings. Most, survive, most surviving boards have been made of wood, the pieces have all been individually moulded to slight different designs and are made in simulated wood and ivory finishes. Besides wood and ivory, Viking sites have revealed jet, glass, bone and antler pieces used. We have based the design of the pieces on the famous Lewis chess pieces discovered in the Outer Hebrides, an area under Viking rule at the time the pieces were made. Most pieces were found to date are cruder in design than this, indicating the game's popularity among ordinary people who could not afford fine things. And that's how to play the game. It's simple and subtle. It's still a game which you can get easily hooked. There are only two types of pieces, the king, which is larger than the other pieces, and the warriors. All pieces make the same move. The design of the board shows you how to set out the pieces. All pieces move the same way. It is the castle or rook's move in chess that is a piece can move along a row of squares vertically or horizontally but not diagonally at each turn a piece can move as many squares as are free but cannot jump another piece no piece other than the king can occupy one of the king's squares though they may pass over the central square and there's a bit more about how to play it so that's quite interesting and i'll just show you the pieces so these must be the that must be like the king 
So that would have been ivory. Thank you for the thumbs up, guys. That must be ivory. Or it would have been ivory, obviously. I'm not going to make that. And then all the other pieces are smaller, as it said. So there's, of the brown ones, there's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 1, 2, 3, 24. There's 24 of these brown ones. And there's 3, 6, 9, 12. 12 of these ones, but some have got like a little hat on. <laughs> a hat. And then one of these main white ones maybe one day i'll play the game and then film that for you if you're interested it's something i always say games if you know how to play a game you can make it yourself you can make a game i just thought that was a bit of interest perhaps i know there's a lot of game people out there people like games okay let's move on to the next section this section I like to call knacks, hats, facts and stats. And today, because you know I'm getting into my freezing zone, I thought we'd do about freezing because that's what I'm looking at, that kind of thing right now. So I will share with you my little points that when I've been reading up on it that I thought, oh, that's a good tip. So I'll share a couple of things from that. Never freeze too many items at once, since this will raise the temperature inside the freezer. I knew about filling a freezer up is more economical, but I didn't think to suddenly put loads of pieces in the freezer at once. So for me, that was a good point. It's bad for the food in the freezer and also means food just put in will take longer to freeze and some texture and flavour will be lost. Hey, Peter, how are you doing? <laughs> What's happening in your life, Peter? So that's my first tip that I read that I thought was maybe a good bit of advice. If you're freezing a lot of food, Turn on the fast freeze switch at least six hours before you begin. That makes sense as well. Remember that homegrown produce is the best, obviously, <laughs> as you can select the young and tender fruit and vegetables in perfect condition. If you don't grow your own, you can always pick your own at farms up and down the country and the reason I marked that was I thought yes a lot of people say I can't grow I haven't got room and various reasons I don't have soil but I still grow <laughs> there are ways and means but if you can't yes go and pick your own we don't have that here in Cyprus but when I was in England that was something that as a child we always went to do that might be where my love of raspberries and blackberries come from because we always went picking blackberries and raspberries at, a, I guess, a farm, you would call it. And I absolutely adore blackberries with, in England, we call it carnation cream. It's like evaporated milk. And that, for me, is the thing. Peter says, good freezer advice. Do check out Peter's channel, guys. Remember, you don't need the URL or the link. If you're listening, just write down the name, Peter Dell, and he shows, shows you some amazing places. I just love going on his channel. He shows you some really nice places. If I could visit somewhere, that would be on my list. Peter says, raw vegetables are best to eat. That way you don't destroy the vitamins and minerals yeah it's like um because we don't use pesticides or chemicals or anything like that i'm not keen to wash things there's some things i do wash but on the whole i don't really like even washing stuff i'm going around the garden when i'm working out there and if i just want a snack i just break off an okra or lady's fingers i just break one of those off bite the end off bite the top off and then eat it so that doesn't get washed. 
Peter says, yummy blackberries with avocado on a slice of rye bread. Oh, I just like blackberries with evaporated milk. Oh, it's delightful. Really. It's funny, I like strawberries, but I don't like strawberry flavour things particularly. But I've said before, Mike likes oranges, but he can't stand anything orange flavour. He likes orange juice, but if you give him something orange flavoured, he's not keen on that. So they're my little tips I found so far on freezing. You're going to notice that I'm sharing things with you that I discover. And as I always say, if anyone's got any tips to help me on my way of prepping to start freezing and preserving, I haven't got my pantry built and that will not be probably for a couple of years yet. So I can't store. So canning's not an option right now because there is nowhere cool in our house. <laughs> there is nowhere we don't have like under stairs we don't have stairs we don't have like an under stair area or anything like that so if you look on my video about I think it's called something about how we're overcoming the the boundary lines that have changed something to do with that the update and how we're resolving that my front door that we technically can't use anymore will then be a door to a pantry eventually, which is now outside, obviously. And we're going to like really insulate it and make it like a walk-in cool room, if you like, put all insulation up. So that's a long way down the line. So canning and that side of things, not really ready for that. The freezer is had to take a back step again. <laughs> this freezer will come one day. But that had to take another back step because all my technical issues, I had to bite the bullet and buy a microphone. And I didn't want to buy anything to do YouTube. But as you know, the mic on the laptop doesn't work. So we just had to buy. We actually bought two different ones. We bought a clip on. That won't work either. So it's very interesting. <laughs> anyway. So, but I am prepping my mind how to deal with all these vegetables and freeze them and preserve them, that kind of thing. So my homework is my live information. <laughs> so if you've got any tips, more on the freezing side. I did go watch my last live to see what I've learned so far of vegetables. Okay, let's go on to the next section. This is what I like to call coffee break what to watch and i'm just finding you little fun videos that you can watch very short videos a bit of fun while you're having your tea or coffee break and the link for these are always down below in the description under this live which is a nightmare because i often forget i think last week i forgot and had to go back and put it in so this week the one i'm going to draw your attention to for a bit of fun, is actually one of my videos on my other channel. My other channel is also linked below, Tranquility Through Life's Natural Beauty, where I am now doing random lives. So check that out. I will put a video up on this channel about them, just so you know what they're going to be, because again, they're going to be a completely different type of live altogether. The last one was talking about the suffragettes, Emily Pankhurst, and also about Workaway, a bit more about that. Krabby, <laughs> Krabby, I saw you had the video up today, but I didn't see it. How are you, Krabby? <laughs> Maple Ranch, how are you doing? How are you doing, KD? I hope you're doing well. I did actually go and watch one of yours mm, this morning think this morning what was it about oh it was just an update I think on your garden I was watching because I jump around yeah I think it was an update showing how things are going in there uh, so uh, what was I saying oh yes yeah, so the video I'm promoting for you to watch is on my other channel because I'm drawing you to fun videos and if you don't know I've got a whole series it's got its own playlist on that channel where I have a little guy uh, I made out of material. He's a gingerbread man, but he's made out of material. And it's his life. It's like his little diary and you follow his life. It's ongoing, his story. 
And the video I'm drawing you to is he's moved to a new house. If you've not followed the story, he's moved to a new house. And his new house, he's a ninja ginger. And he likes to play hide and seek. And he thinks he's the greatest expert at hide and seek. And he's so confident of that that he shows you a picture of a room he's hiding in. And you have three guesses as to where you think he's hiding. And then he does a second room. He shows you the picture of where you think he's hiding. And you have to say out loud three guesses where he could be. He even gives you three chances in that room where you think he would be hiding. Then he shows you a third room. And again, you have to guess where you think he's hiding in that room. And then he gives you the answers as to where he was hiding. So do check that out. It's only, I think, five minutes, that video. But you know me. I hope I'm quite creative and like to have a laugh and a bit of fun. That's what the other channel's about. It's anything that doesn't really fit into this channel that I just want to do. So do have a look. Yes, it's like, where's Wal Waldo? You can Waldo. Yes. Uh, what do we call him? Wally. Where's Wally? Yeah, where's, it's exactly that. <laughs> but the room's there. And as he says, he shows you the pictures. You won't be able to see him because he's hiding so well. You just have to say where you think he could be hiding in each of the room. I think Peter's going over there. <laughs> And in the comments, tell me if you got any right. I doubt it. <laughs> Depends if your mind works like mine does. <laughs> so that's my one to watch in your coffee break um, this week. Each week I do give you another one to watch. They're not always mine, but I just thought, oh, that might be quite good that you like to see something else on my other channel a little bit. So, um, yeah, do check that out. Um, what am I doing? Oh, yeah, next thing. I was like, what do I do now? What am I doing? Okay, next section. I like to call discover, sort, declutter and organise. Now, this kind of runs on from one I did before in this section. And I showed you Flambards, which was a place you could go in England that was all set up like an old fashioned, I think, Victorian or Edwardian village. And it had other things as well. And I talked a lot about that in that video. So you have to go back. I can't help you guys tell you which live does things. I make no notes and have no idea. So I could just say it's a previous live. But any videos you want or if you're, say, growing carrots, you say, have you got a video on that? I can give you the links and I am going to make a video to show you how I do all that, how I can instantly now throw up any link to anything I've done, but not if it's been in a live. Oh, sit up a bit. I'm actually slouching. Um, so these are little places similar or associated to that sort of place, Flambards. Um, oh, Peter, yeah, that's fine. It's just before 1am, must get some shut eye. Been great chatting until we meet again. Best wishes to everyone, stay safe. I just appreciate you saying hello. So all the best, Peter. I really appreciate you coming. Thank you so much. And have a great sleep. <laughs> be dreaming of uh, Waldo. <laughs> He's going to be dreaming of gingerbread men now. So the first place, now I can't guarantee these are still happening or like it. I haven't got any of my English crew on today to clarify. This place is called The Shambles. And this is in Newant. And it's saying Church Street is the location church street newant which is in gloucestershire i don't know if anyone watching knows any areas of england at all and it's a museum of victorian life so for me this is the sort of place so obviously i've been here at some point there And it says, hidden behind the bustling streets of the country town of Newant lies the Shambles, 
a small Victorian town, a snug jumble of cobbled streets, alleyways and squares, a house, cottages, shops and trades, even a mission chapel and a Victorian conservatory. While in Newham, enjoy exploring the real town too. This lovely church, the 17th century market house, browse in the shops or wander around the tree-lined lake by the main car park. After a morning at the shambles, why not visit one of the other attractions close to the town, the Three Choirs Vineyard or the National Birds of Prey Centre. Well-behaved dogs welcome, tell them. <laughs> During the main season, enjoy an ice cream on the terrace or a snack in the barn coffee shop. We are proud of our well-stocked gift shop. And here's a map of the little village called the Shambles. Little hand-drawn map. I sort of recall going there because I remember being in the middle there. So this is a nice place to visit. And on the back it said, we've never have guessed it was this big. We had no idea there was so much here. There's so much we'll have to come back and see it all. Just what some of our many visitors say. The entrance on Church Street hides the maze of cobbled streets and alleyways with shops and trades tucked away in all corners. Come and explore for yourself. Everyone aged from 8 to 80 enjoys the, Victor the Victorian experience of the shambles. I'm not sure why you have to be 8. <laughs> That's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? There's some pictures inside. It says, but as I say, I can't guarantee this, opening times mid-March to December, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., last admission 5 p.m., closed Mondays except bank holidays. And I'll just put them out. It's near Cheltenham. I don't know if any of you have heard of the race course at Cheltenham. So there's a little map, the location. You can see where the lake is now near it. So that's one place similar to that. Oh, is this more on it? Oh, here's a bit more on it. A little um, souvenir pamphlet. A little wagon outside and the gas lamps. You know, these were hand lit. There's that. Oh, it's quite a, quite a big bit. Oh, here's some more pictures. So let's show you the top one first. I like, as you probably know by now, all the old advertisements or advertisements, depending on where you're from. There's a little children's room. This must be in the house because it said there was a house, didn't that? I used to have buyers like this in my old houses. You know, one was Victorian and one was Edwardian. And I redid them all. On leaving the ironmonger's house, cross to the shed opposite, which houses the shoemaker's workshop. Alongside him, up the slope, is the cooper. He made and repaired barrels. And in the square is the blacksmith. Past the coppersmith, look at the lovely moulds. The Victorians certainly like their jellies, or jello. <laughs> Jelly to some of you is jam. <laughs> jelly to English people is jello. On the corner is the toy shop. This really shows the contrast between then and now. No plastic, no large fluffy animals or cuddly toys, and no bright packaging to catch the children's attention. Is that why they prefer the boxes? <laughs> Down the steps across the street is the police station with to its right the tea rooms. Oh, I do like a cream tea. We're doing the main season coffees and teas with lovely homemade cakes are served. Um, though not at Victorian prices shown in the window. Oh, I like that. That's fun. Look in the grocer's shop and the draper and then on to the four story house at the end of the street. <clears throat> Climb right to the top to see the Draper's Attic workrooms. 
On leaving the house, turn left through the little alley to the covered street with the post office, the book dealer and the lace and fancy goods shop. Go through the green door into the tiled hallway and up the stairs in the house of the amateur naturalist and scientist with his amazing collection of all sorts of things from local ores to copper coinage. Return to the street, turn left to the music shop and the pawnbrokers. People pawned all kinds of items. Look at the bundles of clothes. Sometimes they even pawned their best suits all week, only getting them back for church on Sunday. The pawnbroker's window in the square shows the unredeemed items that were put up for sale. Now return up the Draper Street, the exit, and way back to the real world. It's between the tea rooms and the four-storey house. From time to time, the location of various shops and rooms may be altered. We hope this will not infect, affect your enjoyment. Oh, I didn't start the beginning, the beginning's inside. <laughs> On entering, turn right to the courtyard. To the left is the doctor's house with his dispensary and consulting rooms. Opposite is the bakery and alongside the lobby where he keeps his delivery bikes. Leaving the courtyard on the left of the terrace is the path leading down to a beer cellar. Now go down the path to the right of the bandstand to the stone cottage hidden at the end of the garden. Across the way, tucked in near the yew bush, is the basket maker with his trough for boiling the willow outside. You can see where the fire would be lit underneath to heat the water. The willows would then strip easily and also acquire the dark brown basket colour. Now go into the green tin chapel. I'll show you the picture there. So here's the green tin chapel. That was the one we've just read about. This is a typical mission chapel of the late 19th century. Over the years, it has been a boathouse and latterly an ironmonger's store. In 1994, we hired a massive crane which lifted it over the buildings ahead of you and dropped it gently into its present position, a nerve-wracking experience for those of us watching down below. Through the gate in the wall is the street trader's shack. And at the far end of those of the woodmen, there's also a picnic area and a windy house for children to enjoy. There's a picture of that. Oop. There. I like the drawings. <clears throat> They're very well done. The track through the double wine area gates leads to a row of estate cottages and workshops. These could be approached by returning through the gate to the chapel yard and entering the black and white building on your right to the builder, plumber, glazier, printer and farm manager. Exit by the blue porch door by the glazier and on your right, right is the wheelwright. The large disc outside is a wheel banding plate for fitting the iron rims to the cartwheels. Peer through the green door in the corner at the dairy milk float. Alongside is the cheese room and up the small flight of three steps under the arch is the main dairy. Continue down this alley, passing the hobble where an old lady took in washing and further down past the oil and lamp man on your left. Next is the taxidermist. He was skilled at stuffing any animal or bird just think of the work must, that must have gone into the pheasant chicks on his workbench. At the end of the alley is a small courtyard, is the solicitor's office. The main door to the left of the office leads to the photographer's house and up to his studio and conservatory. That's got to be that picture here. It's got to be that one. There's definitely a conservatory up there. Now cross the courtyard to the butcher's where he's making sausages. 
On your right, the large kitchen with a huge cooking range is that of the tobacconist. Go through this alley and look at his shop window in the square. The white china figure is a fine example of the trade signs put into windows and hung above the doors, so people who could not read could identify the shop easily. Hi there, how are you doing, old car junkie? Nice to see you. I'm talking about an old village that you can go and see, a historic village still set out from Victorian times that you can visit in England. Through the small window behind you is the clogger and cobbler. Go round to his main window in the square for a better look and see the locksmith next door. Now go up the brick steps in the corner and turn left at the top into the tradesman's loft. The clock repairer, the glover and hatter, the carpenter and the saddler and the odd, odd job man through the arch. So that must be this picture. Hi, Rose's Lotman Adventure. I've just been on your channel. <laughs> I want to know about those little signs that um, you've got where you're growing everything, those little sort of flag signs. I don't know if you've mentioned them before. I'm sure you would have done, but I've not um, seen the video on those. I think they're great. Did somebody make them? We're talking about... Um, place in England you all know this the shambles in Gloucestershire that you can visit it's set out like an old-fashioned Victorian village so I'm just reading what's there uh where are we up to across the top of the steps is the corn merchant's loft with the belts that drive the barn machinery go down his spiral staircase Opposite at the bottom is the ironmonger's drill store and in the alley on the right is his mower room. Mowers were hard work then. The corn merchant's main shop is on your right and on the wall outside is the hoist to lift the sacks of corn upstairs. Now turn left to the ironmonger's shop and house with his cart shed on the end. The store is crammed full of all sorts of things the ironmonger in Victorian times was really the forerunner of our DIY stores. Go upstairs in the house and see his storeroom equal, equally crowded and his small bedroom with just enough room for the cot. So that must be that one down here. So, yeah, a lovely place. A lovely place. If you can ever get there, then obviously do go. It's my sort of place. I'll say it again for anyone who's coming in later. The Shambles of Newant. And there's the address. Church Street, Newant, Gloucestershire. It's a wonderful place. It's very compact. But as you can see, there's so much there. Is that the Shambles in, in York? Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire. There was a map I had. It's near um, the um, race course, I believe. Where's the map? Near Cheltenham. Cheltenham race course. Don't know if that's handy. Bristol's down here, if that's, if that's a help. <laughs> Looks lovely. It, yeah, definitely worth worth going. Uh, I wonder if the glover is kinfolk. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, thank you. That to scare off the rabbits. Oh, right. Okay. That to scare off the rabbits. Ah, oh, they look really cool. And then another place, not as good. It's really, you walk up and down. I don't think you can go in any of these places. It's just a very quaint street. Cloverly or Cloverly, it's a long way from our home, but we travel a lot. I would definitely go there, definitely. Uh, if you wasn't on, I don't think, when we started, but they were saying about there's an old-fashioned toy shop there as well, so your daughter might well love that. Rose might like that. So this is Cloverly or Cloverly, 
however you want to say it. North Devon. North Devon. Award-winning 20th century complex designed to complement and enhance the enjoyment of your visit. It also provides audio-visual theatre, restaurant, toilets, including disabled, shops, picnic area and children's playground. And then there's different places marked on the way down the road. So that's the centre, as in it's called the centre, not in the middle. The new inn, outside the first of the villages, two inns, you'll see the famous donkeys. In the past, they were used for transport, but today have a light workload, giving rides to children. The building three is the chapel. Building four is a chapel. That's a bit odd. Number five, Fisherman's Cottage. Take a guided tour of life in as a fisherman as it would have been towards the end of the 19th century. Fascinating experience with original artefacts. Building six is an exhibition. Building seven is a craft gallery. Building eight is a souvenir shop. Building nine is a post office. 10 is the key shop, as in Q-U-A-Y, as in water key. 11 is a hotel. 12 is another bit of the key. 13, boat trips. Oh, where can you go from there? Whether you want to go round the bay or across to Lundy Island. 14 is the lifeboat museum. 15 is a waterfall. Hmm. Remember that. 16 Land Rover service. For those who don't feel able or inclined to tackle the fairly steep cobbled streets, a Land Rover service regularly runs between the top of the village and the harbour every day. 17 is Mount Pleasant National Trust, a grassy knoll dedicated as a war memorial and ideal for picnicking. 18 is Pottery, that's it. So it's one long road. Now, I seem to recall going where I was quite young and remembering it was steep and we went on a hot day, or should I say the hot day? Because <laughs> England only has one hot day. And it goes down to, must be the harbour. Yes, here, yeah, harbour, harbour at the bottom. So that's somewhere else. I should be hired by the uh, English tourist uh, thing. So, yeah, that's that one. And then one more I had piled up with it because I'm going through all my old stuff. Now, anyone, I, I don't know if everyone will know it because it is a book or a series of books. But on in, in England, they had a TV series. I believe they've done another series of it with new people and change the characters. And it's The Darling Buds of May. I forget the author of Darling Buds of May, but I went to the actual place where it was filmed, the actual house house they used. And it's a farm. <laughs> when we went, you wasn't allowed to go to this. You could just look at the village. And we drove in and this bloke came out. He's like, whoa, it's a private house. Whoa, you're not allowed to drive in. And I just said, well, you're quite happy to take the money they gave you. So this is the downside of it. You want the money for using your property. And I'll tell you guys, they pay a lot of money to use properties on these uh, things. And I said, well, you're happy for that. This is the downside of it. People will find where you are. So it's Pluckley is the actual village. And this wasn't advertising Darling Buds of May, except for they actually drew inside what was used in the programme, only as drawings, what was used for what. And they're done by the primary school. So within the programme, you could find the places in the village. There's some more pictures there on the bottom. 
I have been trying to do StreamYard so I can show things like this better. But as I've had problems with microphones and whatever else on all social media, it won't also allow me to load the pictures. Oh, I say that. I can load all pictures on it. I've tried. But then I can't play them, if you like. They go up on the screen like this, but it will be all blacked out. <laughs> So I can get them up. It's not, I don't know how to get them up. I just can't physically show them. So that's somewhere else. I'll just show them up in case anyone's from good old Blighty. Let's put it there. You might have some hope of finding it. Ah, oh, you're just down the road from there. Are we talking about this one or the previous one? Because I did see when that comment came up. Let me look back. You might give me a clue. Uh, it's actually, um, it looks lovely. I'm waiting for a home. Lovely. Oh, there you go. Oh, so it was that one you were talking about. Right. Mine's with Glove and Ellie. Glove Ellie. Thank you so much. <laughs> it took, took my poor little brain a minute to sort that out. Oh, that's the one that's near you then. Stunning, beautiful place. It's on one hell of a hill though, yeah. As I say, I was little then. I remember it then. Uh, in the town near me, old junkie says, the main street is the state highway. 20 businesses and churches on both sides of the street. Two stoplights in town. Yeah, no roads here. <laughs> right. Pluckley, yes. Do you know that then? So, they're my little shares today of things I've been sorting out a little bit. Let's see now. This is what I like to call the arts and craft part. And seeing as some of my paintings I showed on one of my lives went down quite well, and people were interested in seeing more, I just pulled some more out. I did some rabbits. I did. I did some rabbits. Do you like my rabbits? I need to get back into my drawing and painting. I really do. I really want to sit and paint my view. I'd like to have a go at that, really. So there's my rabbits. Do you like my rabbits? Uh don't know what this one was. Oh, I think I copied copied this picture. I think I can't remember. These are a long time ago. I think I copied it. Let's get my head out of the way. I think I just copied this. Just experimenting. Hmm, this one. I think I was just like practicing trying to do trees and things because there seems to be a few of these kind of things. Yeah, just practicing. Is that one? Oh, this. I like to see when people do watercolours. I've never been able to do it. I just don't know where to begin. So I just had a little go to see what I could come up with. So we've got a little experiment there on the bottom. I just don't even know how to begin watercolour. I use um, acrylic normally. That one's not too bad. June 2004, it says on the back of this one. And then the last one I've got to show you today, you know I like colour and sunsets and things like that so I'll just have a little go with that just making a little practice so just messing about and just seeing what I could do so there are my little pictures that you might like to share let's move on to my next section that I like to call, let's look at a book I took from my book nook. 
Let's look at a book I took from my book nook. <laughs> There's that. And if you don't like snakes, don't look now. <laughs> and I'll tell you when you can look again, because I know people don't like looking. I have done on my other channel, which is linked below, a whole series of every snake in Cyprus. I've actually got one more snake to go. That's what made me pull this book out because I just need to get the facts out of it. And when we first moved here, the first thing we did was checked out. There used to be, there isn't now, a place you could go as residents or new to the country or indeed on holiday and just see all the snakes know what's what and know what to do and this is something i do with all my guests and work -wise. as soon as they come is show them this book i don't want to put people off but if you don't know you don't know we only have one deadly snake here there's some that could give you a nasty bite and there's many that would just run away so it's just knowing really the really bad one See if we can find him for you. As I say, each snake I've done a video on. If you do want to know more about them. Now, the thing about our most deadly snake is that it's the biggest. It's not like a massive python type of thing. It's not like you see in some countries that it's feet and feet long. It's big enough and it's fat. Here he is. And the trouble with him is that he is so camouflaged, but being as big as he is, you wouldn't see him. And I've told this story before. We used to have a neighbour when we first lived here, but he died. And he did what I tell people straight away, inform about this snake particularly. And he said, if you see it, you won't think it's a snake. He said it can often look like a rag or material on the floor or a piece of clothes with a pattern on. Just the way it lays, it looks like something solid. And he kept on and on, reminding us, reminding us. And you do need that constant reminder. You need a little shock sometimes of seeing another snake to go, oh, yes, need to be more careful. And one day we went round to him and he said, you won't believe this, he said. I woke up one morning and there was a big bit of material on the floor and he lived on his own. It's like it's like someone dropped some clothes on the floor. And it's like, what's that? I don't remember that. What's that there? And he said, I almost picked it up. And he said, for me, always telling you. And then I really picked it up. So that kind of says it all. Hey, Della, how are you doing? Misspell hello. Oh, that's right. I didn't notice. <laughs> Just draw our attention to it. <laughs> so this is our only dangerous one. And you do have barely any time to get the anti-venom. So I think this is how I'm going to die. <laughs> he doesn't run away. And that's why no one's ever died yet in Cyprus from it. So don't worry about that. It's more likely if you're a farmer in a cornfield, something like that, because He's quite pale. You won't see him. And it's if you walk along the cornfield and he won't move and you tread on him, he's going to bite you. He won't attack you. But if you tread on him, he's going to bite you for sure. And that's how people get bitten. So the rules basically are if you can't see exactly where your hand or where your feet are going completely, don't go there. So you can't go running through a poppy field, for example. So, and also, if you live up, live up, lift up great big slabs of stone and rock, he could be under there. He likes the stones. So he's our worst one. Um, as I say, most are small. Most of this sort of size. We've got the coin, coin snake and the cat snake. They're this sort of size. The best one is the black whip snake. You would have seen that in a few of my videos. I think I've done a video on this channel a couple of times with it. I always get dislikes because some people like you to kill snakes. Some people don't like you to kill snakes. So you're always going to get dislikes. We don't kill this one. 
He's a black whip snake and he is what we call the farmer's friend. So he actually eats the bad snake as well. He can be quite long, but he will run away. He will just run. He will run from you, but he's not a bother at all. He won't bite. So if you want to see any more about the snakes of Cyprus, then do check out my other channel link below. And as I say, there's a separate playlist on just the snakes. So have a look at that. How's everyone doing today? Don't forget, guys, add something in the comment section. If new people are here or watch later and they don't know your channel, put something about your channel, either what you've just been doing, what you might be doing soon, or just a bit about your channel if your channel doesn't say everything you do. So do write something now. You're very welcome to do that. I'm here for the community. And <laughs> I keep going on, say, some of your channels, and then I see people that I know weren't on them, but they've come to your channel. So I'm really pleased by that. All oh, why my numbers are dropping, 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 because I'm doing so much for other people's channels at the moment. Um, my poor little channel. So please share my channel. I'd appreciate that. <laughs> oh dear. Slipping back to under the 1K. <laughs> This next section I like to call Blast from the Past. Anything to do with the past. And again, something that people have been liking is me talking about the old games, board games. So I'm going to carry on with a bit more history of that. And this game has many different names. In England, it's called Operation. In Cyprus... What was it called? I'd probably say what it is in this because I wrote this out. I did uh, a show where it was about games and things. Let me read it and then if not, I'll try and work it out for you. Operation Board Game, originally made by Milton Bradley and currently made by Hasbro. It's been in production since 1965, the year in which the game was invented by John Spinello with the patent nicknamed Cavity Sam. That's interesting. Cavity Sam. Uh, where are we? Variations occur. UK has specialist cards. The USA has doctor cards. Original pieces to be removed were Adam's apple, you remember with the little tweezers, you have to reach in and you mustn't hit the edge because the buzzer sounds, so you mustn't hit the edge. Broken heart, wrenched ankle, that was a spanner. I remember they were funny things. Butterflies in the stomach, that was a little plastic butterfly you had to pull out. Water on the knee, was that a bucket? I think that was a bucket. Funny bone. Charlie horse, ankle bone, connected to the knee bone. I remember that. That was two little bits of plastic sticking up and there was an elastic band looped round them. He had to get the elastic band off. Wishbone and bread bone. Brain freeze was added in 2004 when Milton Bradley allowed fans to vote on a new piece to be added from the choice of brain freeze, tennis elbow and growling stomach. Well, it wasn't much of a um, choice then, was it? You can choose, but you must have one of these. <laughs> Many other versions have been produced, such as Toy Story 3, Doctor Who, Hulk, Dalek, Simpsons, Shrek, Spider-Man, Sponge Square, SpongeBob SquarePants. Ah, in Cyprus, the Operation Ball game is called Little Doctor. I think in America, is it just called Doctor? Tell me if I'm wrong. And then I taught a pupil at my stage school. And she was in the television advert for the Operation Game, which was also televised in both France and Germany. 
and she's still working in the West End today. And she's also been in top film and main television series, as many of them did. And the other name game, game name that is different is Snakes and Ladders, we say in England. And that shoots and ladders, I believe, in America. So I just love the differences, things like that. Let me have a drink. Okay, let's go on to the next section for today. I like to call this So Grow Mo and Ho Ho Ho. <laughs> I planted some seeds today. It was a bit hot, really, but I planted some more. So today I'm talking about companion planting. I did a whole video on this a long time ago. I think I had mentioned it within other videos. So I'm very keen on companion planting, what goes with other plants. And of course, there's also what not to put with other plants, which I've done before as well. And if you're planting in pots, a tip of mine is always choose light coloured pots because they stay cooler. Basil, companion planting, likes all vegetables and plants. It also helps tomatoes develop their flavour and it stops mosquitoes. Beans for a companion plant. Plant it with beetroots, carrots, cucumber and strawberries. It also likes marigolds and summer savoury, which enhances the beans flavour and prevents beetles. I always write all these things down in case you're wondering where I get these things from. <laughs> this is Dawn writing things down. <laughs> I try and collate bits of paper with all the same things, then I can share them as something. Never plant beans with garlic, even though garlic is something that keeps a lot of bugs away. Garlic and onions are very good to plant with most things. Carrots. As a companion plant, chives, rosemary, sage, they all help the flavour of carrots and stop the insects. With my carrots, because I don't really do many herbs, I like to do garlic or onions. Don't plant dill with carrots because that will stop the carrots growing properly. Now, I'm sure somebody could tell me why. Is that to do with the roots? I don't know enough about dill to tell you. Corn as a companion plant. Good to grow with corn are beans, cucumbers, white, white, <laughs> white geraniums. And that's because white geraniums stop the Japanese beetle. So anyone having trouble with the Japanese beetle, white geraniums, good tip for you. Don't plant corn near tomatoes because they get the same worms, the same bug worms. So if you plant those together, you're going to actually end up with twice the amount. Cucumber. Good to plant with cucumber are beans and tomatoes. Plant marigolds round the base of cucumber and that helps stop the beetles. Plant tansy to prevent ants with the cucumber. Don't plant sage near cucumber as it will instantly destroy the cucumber plant. That's an interesting one. So what sage got then that it does that? That's very interesting. Strawberries, good to grow with strawberries is lettuce and thyme. Thyme prevents worms. I really need to grow me some strawberries, blackberries and raspberries. There are three things I really want to get. I tried strawberries from seeds and wasn't really happening. I need to get starters of all three dreams. 
tomatoes. Good to plant with tomatoes are cucumber, basil and mint. My mint grows quite near my tomatoes and they are doing pretty well. Basil keeps mosquitoes away. Mint helps enhance tomato flavour. Now, I'm growing it near it, but I wouldn't grow anything in because particularly mint goes crazy. So I'm growing that in that, I don't know if you've seen that really long, thin, narrow trough thing I found. And I'm now growing the mint in that. So it's contained, but it can spread quite a long way. Don't plant corn, dill or potatoes near tomatoes. It's actually quite dangerous to plant potatoes and tomatoes together that's actually quite quite a big no-no it's poison okay the section you've all been waiting for <laughs> i know what you like monday fun day jokes quotes puns and fun i know you love the jokes i've just got one for you today because it's a longish one i better have a drink before So, before I read it, I don't know if it translates to other countries. Lockets are throat sweets, like lozenges, and they have honey in the middle. And they have, like, the menthol that you can breathe in as well. So, lockets is the name. I don't know if you get that, but if you don't, you won't get the joke. So, lockets. Like a menthol sweet for your throat. Okay. A jelly baby, you know, that's like a gummy sweet, yes? A jelly baby walks into a bar and starts talking to a smarty, like a little M&M. After a few beers, the smarty says, Here, a bunch of us are heading to that new club. Fancy tagging along? The jelly baby says, no, mate, I'm a soft centre. I always end up getting my head kicked in. So the smarty says, don't worry about it. I'm a bit of a hard case. I'll look after you. Jelly baby thinks about it for a minute and says, mm, fair enough, as long as you'll look after me. And off they go. After a few more beers in the club, three lockets walk in. As soon as he sees them, Smarty hides under the table. The lockets take one look at the jelly baby and start kicking him and breaking cola bottles over his little jelly head, hitting him with little sugary chairs and generally having a laugh. After a while, they get bored and walk out. Jelly baby pulls his battered jelly baby body over to the table and wipes up his jelly baby blood and turns to the smarty and says, I thought you were going to look after me. I was, said the smarty, but those lockets are completely menthol. <laughs> so you see why you had to get that. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, let's do one more section today. Times are getting on. It's 6.39 p.m. in Cyprus, just so you know. So this last section for today, I like to call inspiration and creation. And it could be anything I show you that might inspire you or lead you to maybe create something. Who knows? Maybe it inspire you if you do crafts or painting or drawing or just inspire you for the rest of the day. So I'm just going to show you some pictures for you to enjoy. First picture, that's obviously London. I just love sunsets. It's nice to sometimes just find a picture and put it up for a week and then next week change it. Albeit in a photo frame is quite nice. Have 
just one photo frame hanging up choose a picture and then after a few days or a week or so or seasonal of a different seasonal picture and i like lights when you see lights like this i like that that's pretty nice Let's see another picture for you So this is a C. Oh, you can see there's a calendar on the back. Can you see through that? These are actually from a calendar. I just kept the pictures because they were quite nice. Oh, look, there's a building up there. So these are calendar pictures. I don't know if any of you keep your pictures from calendars. You can make other things from them. There's that one. I like the colours in that again. This one's rather beautiful. It's just from a magazine that I particularly liked. Look at that. So that's not too distracting in the background. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Put something behind it. I don't know if that affects you looking at it or not. There we go. That's better. It's quite nice. I do love taking pictures of nature here. You've probably discovered that. I like to say that. Oh, no, I found a baby hedgehog yesterday. I have filmed it. Little tiny baby hedgehog. It was uh, under the net where I've got my cold rabbi. He could get out, but because I doubled it over, so I've got twice as much safety from bugs. And he'd gone between the two. But Mike said, oh, can he get out? I said, well, he got in and he wasn't trapped. So, uh, yeah, I've got a video of that coming at some point. So, again, for me, I like colours and lights. So, there's a nice picture, a bit different. Ah, oh, this is what I say about the seasons. Probably make something out of this at some point. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. That would be quite nice, actually, as um, the same tree through the seasons. I'm doing a video slowly I'm making of the changes of my trees, as in when they're first planted to when they matured. So it's going to be some time before you see that. And also how some of our garden and land was and how it is now, i.e. the bit of land before our swimming pool was in. That's quite interesting. <laughs> Uh, a few more this one again that's beautiful I just love nature that's why my other channel is tranquility through life's natural beauty I was going to do more of wildlife and stuff on there but I think beauty can be in many different forms and even be in words just as words you can say something really meaningful with words. It doesn't have to be poetry or a story. You can just say something nice to someone. Heartfelt. That's nice. Uh, oh, last one. Last one. It's just the edge. I haven't folded this one over. So we've got... Now, I've just edited... Another walk I've done, which is through the edge of a pine forest. But as I keep saying, I can't put any more out of my walks because I said on the last one that I posted, the next one will be the ravine. And I haven't managed to get to the ravine yet. So the other walks can start piling up. <laughs> and then I have lots of videos to go. So that will be pretty cool. So I think I'm going to leave it there for today, guys. And make sure you've hit that thumbs up if you're watching it back later. I really appreciate you coming and I really appreciate your comments. And, oh, crazy cat woman, I'm just off. <laughs> Thank you so much for popping in, though. What time is it there now? What time is it there, Terry? You're, are you seven hours behind? Depends on which area you are. I think you're seven hours behind me. I believe. I believe. <laughs> I think you're seven hours behind me. Um, 
11 a.m. Oh, your CST. Right. It's uh, quarter to seven at night here now. Quarter to seven. Do you like my new background? <laughs> I was saying I'm doing um, lives on my other channel now as well. If you don't know my other channel, I'm not sure if you do. It's in the link below. It's the name of my other channel. And I'm doing um, some different videos there. You love it. It's better when I don't have the ball, but I put the ball there because people are sending me stickers now. So my ball's there. But these are just... Um, like beach wraps, you know, when you go to the beach. And I actually got this one and this one as leaving presents from England. I thought that was such a brilliant idea for a leaving present. And this one I bought myself for our honeymoon. I bought myself that for our honeymoon, that one. So quite nice. I prefer that that's my favourite one, the pink one, then the white one. This one has got some sequins. If I move, there are sequins on it. I thought, oh, I want the prettier one this side. I thought, no, it's better the plainer one, sort of behind my head, I guess, a little bit. <laughs> and all I've done is, oh, thanks. All I've done is because there was already a, I say, a screw in the wall. It only comes out a tiny knobble, so you can't really hang much on it. And I thought, how am I going to hang them there? So I've got a thin bamboo and just made a little loop around it. And it just about fits on there, the uh, little loop I've made from a bit of material. And I've just looped it. So I was like, well, I made this background for my other channel's lives. And I thought, well, I'll keep it. It's, it's a bit different. But I had to turn the fan off because this one was blowing everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Smart idea, yeah. I'll show you the top. Look, see, it's just a wrong bit of bamboo. We grow our own bamboo, and then, as you can see, a tiny little bit of material I've just hooked around the bamboo and hooked it over. It means I can't slide these up and down. I can only bring to one side and the other side. And then the picture that was hanging on that, I've uh, now got opposite me. It means now, look, I slouch. <laughs> I'm actually really leaning back now. <laughs> of course, I should go get the bamboo. <laughs> I tried to get some sleep, but I had a fly bug in my back. Oh, that's annoying, isn't it? If I can hear a fly when I'm going to bed, I can't go to sleep. I have to get out of bed until I've dealt with the fly or found it. Sometimes when you put the light on to deal with it, they go quiet. And you're like, well, where is it now? <laughs> And we've got beans in our bedroom. And they, when you turn the light on, I've realised I fly up and just go slightly in between the beam and the ceiling. <laughs> they are so annoying. It's like, it's like mosquitoes. If you hear them, then you're like, when you don't hear them, you then panic. Well, they must be on me somewhere. <laughs> So like, where are they? <laughs> they are such annoying things. They really are. <laughs> You've got cataracts. Can't see buggers. We have out here, we call them noceums. Noceums. And they are so tiny and transparent. And like a little transparent, slightly white, but not like white fly. They are transparent and they bite as in really sharp, like they're jabbing you with a pin. Oh, but you can't deal with them. And you only get those really, let's say you sit out on the patio at night and you have some lights on, like moths are attracted to where the light is. Remember, I live remote. There's no properties anywhere near here. So if we have a light outside on or oh, they all come and if you have your legs down on the floor they seem to go low for some reason so if you put your feet up on another chair you're mostly all right i've got big bugs like that oh just like i don't know what would you say is your worst insect if the world could be read for you of just one insect i don't know Flies are pretty annoying. Blue bottles are pretty annoying. Mosquitoes bite. 
I think these ones that really pinprick you because they really hurt. I'm going to go for no seams. I'm going to go for that. What are you choosing? I mean, they all have their purpose in life. Goodness knows what. But they all supposedly have their purpose. Some there's so many we've got cicadas at the moment. I don't mind those. Some people think they go on all day, but they don't. They have two times, two times a day when they get going, and it's because birds are their predators. So it's when the birds get up, and it's until the birds have all gone off and done what they're going to go and do, and then in the evening when the birds are starting to come back to the trees, I don't mind them. It's a bit annoying for filming, though, because if you're outside, you're going here, and I'm sure I've done some uh, narration, and I've had my window open right next to me here, and I'm sure <laughs> you can hear something in the background. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I'm definitely going to go this time. I stayed on a bit for you, but I've got to go and do some tea. It's nearly 7 p.m. here now, so I'm going to go and do some tea. And as I was saying, I really do appreciate every single person. You really make my day. I love the comments. I love reading them. And I always have and always will answer every comment. So drop comments because I love to chat and answer. And thanks everyone for being here. Really appreciate it. And as I've been so busy trying to build everyone's channel up, if you'd share my channel, I'd really appreciate it because while I've been helping everyone's channel, mine's drifting down pretty rapid. <laughs> so until next time, be seeing you and Maraki.